Hello everyone, Jeff with The Green Review here. Can we talk about bugs? Bugs are not the same thing as, as insects. Just like Volkswagen bugs are not the same thing as all cars, one small group of cars and one small group of insects are the real bugs. Everything else isn't. Insects are in a group of animals called arthropods, along with mites, scorpions, and spiders. Just to show that not all arthropods are bad for people and, and plants, crabs and lobsters are also in that group. Arthro means jointed and pod means foot. We'll be including mites in our discussion of insects since some of them also damage plants. Arthropods have an external skeleton made of the polysaccharide chitin. It is a hard jointed frame on the outside of the body. Arthropods can only increase in size by shedding the exoskeleton during a process called molting. Muscles and internal organs are attached to the exoskeleton. Adult insect bodies are divided into three regions of head, thorax, and abdomen. They have six legs attached to the thorax, while spiders and mites have eight legs. Lobsters have ten, millipedes have many legs, mites, spiders, and ticks have eight legs and only two body regions, as the head and thorax are combined, and they do not have antenna. Millipedes are worm-like and have two body regions, but they are made of numerous body segments that each have two pairs of legs. Centipedes are flattened, not round, and only have one pair of legs per, per segment. Insects do not have lungs, and their blood does not contain hemoglobin to carry oxygen. Insects breathe through tiny holes in their skin called spiracles. The oxygen passes through a system of branching tubes to all parts of the body. The honeybee has an antenna, head, thorax, where six legs and four wings originate, and an abdomen. It's a good example of an insect. Insects have two types of complicated lifestyles, complete and incomplete. In the complete life cycle, they go from an egg to a larva to a pupa to adult. The complete life cycles are commonly seen in beetles, butterflies, mosquitoes, and many others. The incomplete life cycle has an egg, a nymph, and an adult. The nymph usually looks like a wingless, smaller version of the adult. The nymph may go through several molts as it gets bigger, grows wings, and becomes sexually mature. Incomplete life cycles are found in aphids, grasshoppers, praying mantises, and many others. The adult squash bug, Anis tristis, has black wings that extend to cover the whole abdomen. Nymphs have black wings that partially cover the abdomen. There is one adult in several larval stages in this photo. The larval stage of a complete life cycle has the potential to grow enormously. The caterpillar of a sphinx moth may be thousands of times bigger than its egg. The pupa stage is one of the most marvelous processes in all of the animal kingdom. The larva pretty much dissolves, reorganizes, and reforms into a completely different shape with numerous physical features that didn't exist in the larval stage, including antenna, compound eyes, internal organs, legs, different mouth parts, reproductive organs, and wings. It's amazing. So what's all this mean to me? Because insects go through different life cycle changes, many new insecticides are designed to interrupt the process. During molting, a new soft skin develops under the old hard shell. The insect grows in size, cracks open the old shell, walks out, and the soft shell expands and then hardens. This process is controlled by hormones. Some new insecticides are insect hormones that stop the molting process at some point. When the insect can't get out of its shell, it dies. These are very safe for all the other kinds of animals. Insects can be divided into good guys and bad guys. The good guys may be beneficial by killing and eating bad guys, or they may do things that benefit us, such as pollinating flowers. Other good guys may do nothing more than just not be bad guys. The bad insects are bad because they do something that people don't like. They may feed on plants, pets, livestock, or people. They may harm or pollute our possessions, like beetles that eat flour or clothes, or cockroaches that foul our kitchens. Most pest insects are a pest in only one stage of their life, but some, like the Japanese beetle, are pests in two stages. The Japanese beetle larva is a grub that eats roots, and especially in lawns, and the adult eats flowers and leaves. Insects can cause damage outside the plant, inside the plant, above ground, and below ground. They damage plants in six common ways. Chewing insects eat parts of flowers, leaves, twigs, and roots. 
Sucking insects suck plant fluids out of fruit, leaves, twigs, and roots. Rasping insects remove outer layers of the plant surface, exposing plant fluids that they lap up. Number four is boring insects that consume plant tissue for food while they move around inside of leaves, stems, and roots. Number five, some insects burrow, nest, or pupate inside plant leaves, stems, and roots, weakening the plant even if the insect is not consuming the plant for nutrition. Six, lastly, some insects may be not harmful themselves, but they can transmit bacterial, fungal, and viral diseases. Cabbage worm caterpillars are chewing insects that eat holes in cabbage leaves, as shown here. Damage from four-line plant bugs that use a needle-shaped mouth to suck the juice out of leaves leaves circular dead spots. A yellow-striped army worm is rasping the top layers of a canna leaf. The damage looks like windows through the leaf as clear tissue is left covering the hole. Columbine leaf miner tunnels inside a columbine leaf. So what's this mean to me? The type of damage seen on a plant will quickly narrow down the possible culprits. Of course, there may be more than one type of insect causing damage to the plant at the same time. A plant may have visible beneficial insects plus damage caused by bad insects not visible at the moment. It is important to correctly identify the insects that cause the damage so that you don't spray the beneficial insects. Finding holes in your plant is like seeing the check engine light come on in your car. It needs further investigation. So when you see one of these different types of damage, whether it's a chewed area, a hole in the leaf, a hole like that a borer could have formed, rasped leaf areas that are smoothly filed off, then you know which type of insect to start looking for for the damage because you've narrowed it down by the damage that they cause. And this is Jeff for The Green Review. Thanks for watching.